My background was uh, in the history of technology, and I want to just spend just one minute. How did I wind up in the field of EMP threat? Uh, by a coincidence, coincidentally, on uh, the day that the congressional report on the threat of EMP came out, which was chaired by Congressman Roscoe Bartlett, and this gentleman, Dr. Cry, was a very key moving force in that. I happened to be in D.C. on the same day. And in a discussion that evening with Newt, the comment came up that there was zero response to this report. He asked me to go over to talk to Congressman Bartlett, who inspired me with a very simple observation that the problem truly is that there's no constituency. Mention EMP to any group of citizens and you're nowhere. Uh, mention any number of other issues. The one I like to point out is we might recall that horrific incident about four years back of a woman who was attacked by a chimpanzee and her face was destroyed. Congress passed a law outlawing the ownership of chimpanzees. So you're safe when you come to my house now. But uh, the point is, what's the probability threat there of any of us being attacked in such a manner versus the threat of EMP? Uh, I was inspired by the classics of my youth, particularly Alas Babylon and On the Beach. Thus I wrote the book with the intent of trying to get a popular novel out there that took a complex issue and put it into a small community and what happens to each one of us individually, what happens to us, our parents, our children, our town. And the book has 12 weeks on the NYT list. I want to shift into some of the things that as a, my background in military history and the history of technology and how it applies to warfare, and that is the issue of EMP EMP is a first strike weapon, and it's a technological game changer. And throughout the history of warfare, we have always seen that the losing side in a war often trumps the victor in the next conflict by rethinking the paradigm. A very simple example is Gracie and Agincourt, where the uh, M1 tanks of their time, the French armored nobility, suddenly encountered English longbows. Thus, we see all the way to the present of a technology that's been dismissed or recently realized trumps what's considered to be the existing dominant force on the battlefield. What is the first thing that Sun Tzu talks about and almost every military writer in the opening moves of warfare, and that is destruction of command and control. If you can shut down command and control of your opponent, you have pretty well won the issue before battle is even joined. What is the best way currently to take out command and control? It would be cyber attack or EMP. I was thinking last night about something of the issue of morale. Uh, I recently read that what, was, what really broke the morale was not necessarily the being pushed back in North Africa or the debacle on the Eastern Front. It was men going home on furlough or wounded or getting letters <coughs> and seeing that city after city after city was being leveled. That while they fought on the front lines, their wives, their children, their parents, their families, their homeland was being flattened. That is truly what was breaking the morale of the German troops. I remember talking with a German soldier, a veteran of the Russian front, who said the most terrifying experience of his life was he happened to be in Hamburg when it was hit and he said it shook him for the rest of the war. He realized we were going to lose, as he put it. So we see a command and control of first strike via EMP or cyber attack as a decapitation of information, command and control, but also strikes morale. And then you have societal breakdown. We need not go through an exercise here of what happens if the electricity turns off in the next minute and what happens to this city within the hour. But, as an old hero of mine, Rod Serling, once said, present it for your consideration. Present it for your consideration if on 9-11 we all saw the first minute of the impact on the second tower and the Pentagon, and then the entire news grid went down. Think of the panic that would have struck across the country within the hour. 
we have been used ever since the age of telegraphy to having instant access to information. And particularly within the last 15 years, I'm a college teacher as well, if my kids walk out of the classroom and they can't immediately text their boyfriend or in the classroom or their parents, they're throwing a panic attack. Think of the shutdown of command and control, but also the communication grid of a civilian society. What happens next? It's a grim proposition. One of the things that I found difficult in communicating the threat of EMP and cyber attack, the good analogy to that is what the film On the Beach created. How many of you have actually seen the film On the Beach or read the book? To this day, if I hear Walsing Matilda in the background, I'm suddenly in tears, all right? It, it was on TV <coughs> just a couple of days ago. I read an article a while back pointing out that On the Beach played a contributing factor in the shutting down of the American civil defense system that had been developed in the 40s and the 50s. The reason being that when On the Beach came out, it presented such an overwhelming, catastrophic view of thermonuclear war as a planet-destroying event that the attitude then became, why in hell are we even bothering to try and prepare our infrastructure, build command and control centers, dig the bunker in the backyard? It's all meaningless. The infamous line, the living will envy the dead. That is the problem that we here face today. How do we convince the general populace, the voters, the people up on the hill, that the cyber threats that you're talking about, which sound sci-fi to some, but I'm sitting here going, gosh, that's a great book. How do we convince that these are real? EMP, thanks to Dr. Pry and so many others, is starting to come through as a reality. But it seems so overwhelming that most people react with, oh, hell, somebody else will figure it out. Or I'll go back to my Xbox. I do see glimmers of light. There are constituencies that are starting to react. How many of you are familiar with the state of Maine recently? An incredible experience. And OK, I'll throw it out there. She read a couple of books about EMP bothered her, and I'm not just referring to mine, I'm referring to others. Even if we're not seeing success from the federal level, we are starting to see success from the state level. Developing command and control nodes that are survivable, addressing issues of cybersecurity, and hardening infrastructure against uh, EMP. That's the goal that uh, NOAA Foundation, uh, they're just down the road from me, and they've been working aggressively on it, both politically and within the community. We have to build the constant. I mean, we're, we're having a remarkable experience here today, but we're all preaching to the choir. How do we build a broader constituency to react to make sure it doesn't happen?